Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 102 following. Mine enemies revile me all day, and they that praised me are sworn to gather against me. Verse 8. With their mouth they praised, in their heart they were laying snares for me. Hear their praise. Master, we know that you are true and that you teach the way of God in truth, neither care you for any man. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Matthew chapter 22 verse 16 and 17 And whence this evil repute except because I came to make sinners my members, that by repentance they may be in my body? Thence is all the calumny, thence the persecution. Why, your master is eating with publicans and sinners? They that be whole need not a physician, but they that be sick. Matthew chapter 22, verse 16 and 17, and Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Would that you were aware of your sickness, that you might seek a physician, you would not slay him, and through your infatuated pride perish in a false health. I have eaten ashes as it were bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Verse 9. Because he chose to have among his members these kinds of men, that they should be healed and set free, thence is the evil repute. Now at this day, what is the character of pagan calumny against us? What brethren do you conceive they, te they tell us? You corrupt discipline and pervert the morality of the human race. Why do you attack us? Say why? What have we done? By giving, he replies, to men room for repentance, by promising impunity for all sins. For this reason men do evil deeds careless of consequences, because everything is pardoned them when they are converted. And what is to become of you, miserable man, if there shall be no harbour of impunity? If there is only license for sinning and no pardon for sins, where will you be? Whither will you go? Surely even for you did it happen, that that afflicted one ate ashes as it were bread and mingled his drink with weeping. Do not such a feast now please you? But nevertheless, he replies, men add to their sins under the hope of pardon. Nay, but they would add to them if they despaired of pardon. Do you not observe in what licentious cruelty gladiators live? Whence this except because as destined for the sword and sacrifice, they choose to sate their lust before they pour forth their blood? Would not you also thus address yourself? I am already a sinner, already an unjust man, one already doomed to damnation, hope for pa of pardon, there is none. Why should I not do whatever pleases me, although it be not lawful? Why not fulfill as far as I can any longings I may have, if after these nothing but torments only be in store? Would you not thus speak unto yourself, and from this very despair become still worse? Rather than this, then, he who promises forgiveness does correct you, saying, As I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 11 
For in order that men might not leave the worse from despair, he promised a harbour of forgiveness. Again, that they might not leave the worse from hope of pardon, he made the day of death uncertain, fixing both with the utmost providence, both as a refuge for the returning and a terror to the loitering. Eat ashes as bread, and mingle your drink with weeping. By means of this banquet you shall reach the table of God. Despair not, pardon has been promised you. Thanks be to God, he says, because it is promised. I hold fast the promise of God. Now therefore live well. Tomorrow, he replies, I will live well. God has promised the pardon. No one promised you tomorrow. And that because of your indignation and wrath, because you have taken me up, you have cast me down. Verse 10. This is your wrath, O Lord, in Adam, that wrath in which we were all born, which cleaves unto us by our birth the wrath froth the stock of iniquity, the wrath from the mass of sin. According to what the Apostle says, we also were once the children of wrath, even as others. For he says not, the wrath of God shall come upon him, but abides upon him, because that wrath in which he was born is not taken away. Man set in honour is made in the image of God, raised up to this honour, lifted up from the dust from the earth, he has received a reasonable soul. By the vivacity of that very reason is placed before all beasts, cattle, birds that fly, and fishers. Genesis one twenty six. For which of these has reason to understand? because none of them is created in the image of God. Therefore, because you have taken me up, you have cast me down. Punishment follows me, because you have given me a free choice. For if you had not given me a free choice, and for this reason did not make me better than cattle, just condemnation would not follow me when I sinned. Thus you have taken me up, in giving me freedom of choice, and by your judgment you have cast me down. My days have declined like a shadow, verse 11. He had said above, My days are consumed away like smoke. And he now says, My days have declined like a shadow. In this shadow they must be recognized, in this shadow light must be discerned, lest afterward it be said in late and fruitless repentance, What has pride profited us? Or what, or what good has riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow. Wisdom, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Say at this season, all things will pass away like a shadow, and you may not pass away like a shadow. My days have declined like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. For he had said above, My heart is smitten down, and I am withered like grass. But the grass bedewed with the Saviour's blood will flourish afresh. I have withered like grass, I, that is, man after that disobedience, this I have suffered from your just judgment, but what are you? For not because I have fallen have you grown old, for you are strong to set me free, who has been strong to humble me. But you, O Lord, endure forever, and your remembrance throughout all generations. Verse 12. Your remembrance, because you do not forget, throughout all generations, for as much as we know the promise of life, both present 
and future 1 Timothy 4 8